Let's have a look at another command that we can use called git reset. And this is where I feel the terminant starts to show its power compared to these desktop clients that are out there. Um, I still think the terminal can do some cool commands, but the desktop client is great for showing what actually changes. And, um, and that's why I'm going to use both in this lesson. I'm going to use the terminal just to show you the reset and what it's all about. But before we do that, let me try and explain what we are aiming to do here. First of all, remember there are three stages right now that I've talked about. I've talked about things being unstaged, meaning that they are just locally on the machine. They have, nothing has been done. They've not been added and they've not been committed. Added meaning they have not been made ready for the next commit and committed means they've not been added to a new version. So let me try and explain that using the UI actually to see if that can help with your understanding here. So this is the newest thing out there and in my new thing there are three new changes that I did. One is I've added two new files and the other one is that I've modified document 5. So I can see that. So the next question is, do I want to add these files to the next commit? And I can do that by pressing the check mark here to tell it, yes, I want to add these guys. So this is the add command to say, do I want to stage them? Do I want them ready for, are they ready for the next version that I want to build? Are they ready for the next commit? Okay. Another thing I can do is I can say add all. Yes, they are all ready for the next commit. But this means that now they are unstaged and now they are staged, ready for the next commit. In the command prompt, it would be looking something like this. If I do a git status now, all of the files would be unstaged, meaning they are read both places. But if I do a git add, and I say I want to add text document 5, now the text document 5 is actually staged for the next commit. So it's ready, this guy is staged, these guys are still unstaged, meaning that if I did a git commit now, only this guy would be in the next version. If I do a git at all, everything would be staged. Everything is green now. If I do a git status here, you would see that now everything is staged. But what if I change my mind now? I don't want to stage, stage everything. I want to only stage file number five or I only want to stage nothing right now. I want it to be unstaged everything again. That's where you use the command git reset to discard these changes. Not to remove them from the hard disk, but to remove them from the staging area for the next commit. So let's say that I didn't want to, actually I didn't want to do it for file 10 anyway. I'll do a git reset to say file number 10 should not be ready for the next commit anyway. I changed my mind. Now you'll see if I do a git status again, that now actually file number 10 is back in the unstaged area. I don't want anything to be staged. I could just do a git reset with nothing in here, not a writ, but a git reset. And then it would actually put everything back to unstaged. So if I did a git status now, you would see everything was unstaged again. Great. So that's how you use the git reset command for basic stuff like saying, I want to unstage my commands. But what if I want to go even further? What if I actually wanted to do it so that I would not only unstage it, but actually undo every uncommitted change. This is where it really starts getting powerful and also scary because if you do that you will actually remove whatever changes you made locally. Your hard disk will be reset to a previous version. So beware of what you're doing here. You can actually destroy code you've written so you can lose an entire day, a month of work. It will be gone for good. In the last version where we did it with the revert we could at least see history of those changes, but now it will actually be gone. So what I want to do now is this command, git reset hard. Git reset dash dash hard. And notice what happens. The file that was modified, only the modified file has been reset and there's no change here anymore. So let's do a git status now. See what's going in here. Notice I've gone back to a version where the modification that I had with text 5 is gone. It's out of there. So it's lost forever and ever. Next lesson we'll do something even more crazy but this is how you can use the reset and just again beware when you use the hard term you will lose history 
or local changes, they will be gone. So know what you're doing when you're using Reset. See you in the next lesson.